Good evening. Good evening. I'm glad you're enjoying each other and having such a fun time because this is a really, really great evening. I'm Kathy Klink, a member of the uh, Hamilton Community Foundation Board and chair of the Education Committee. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome each of you to the Harry T. Wilkes Hamilton Celebrates Education Awards and Dinner. As I said, this will be a spectacular evening. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, close the education achievement gap. Close the education achievement gap. I think that's what you as educators work to do day in and day out. It doesn't matter what subject you teach. It doesn't matter what grade your students are in. It doesn't matter what role you have in your school. You're striving every single day to provide the best opportunity for your students. And for that, I say, as a former educator, thank you and I salute you because you have one of the toughest jobs in the world. As a member of our education committee, we value partnerships and collaboration. And there are many of you in this room with whom we've had the opportunity to work. But because of, maybe let me say it that way, this way, because of those collaborations and partnerships, we have been able to put together several initiatives. One is called Start Ready, which is our attempt to provide preschool to every student. Youth Exploring Success, better known as YES, which is an opportunity for students who are in high school whose parents perhaps um, have graduated from high school but not gone on to college, and these are first time students considering college. They have the opportunity to work with a counselor who points them in the right direction and in many different directions. We also have scholarships. Every year in the spring, we award, through the foundation, $1 million in scholarships. And we have been doing that now for years and years. Finally, we have a new program. It's called Skills Central. Skills Central is for adults who are unemployed or underemployed. And they have the opportunity to have some training so that they can be more available on the job market. So just as you're working to make sure that everyone is learning, we're working in partnership with you, and we appreciate the fact that we're able to do that. So it's my pleasure to um, ask those, even though they've turned the lights out, maybe they'll turn them back on for a minute, ask those administrators, whether you are building administrators, central office, school board members, or Hamilton Community Foundation board members, and our CEO president to please stand and be recognized. So again, on behalf of the Hamilton Community Foundation, welcome to this evening, and it's now my honor to introduce to you the Master of Ceremonies, Sean Higgins. Thank you and good evening. This, this is a celebration this evening. And I, I do want to point out that not everybody has this celebration, not every community as a celebration. This is uh, something unique here in Hamilton. Very often in your own community we forget and we take some things for granted, but I do want to point out uh, as you see the, the name at the top says Harry T. Wilkes and point out the information, the biographical information at the, on the front of the program that this program continues on annually thanks to a gentleman named Harry T. Wilkes. His devotion to education, his devotion to Hamilton, uh, is seen in a lot of areas and the grants and recognition that take place at this dinner every year are thanks to the gentleman who uh, put this in motion. So this, we, we don't want to take for granted that this event is something special and that uh, you are something special and this was all set up through the Hamilton Community Foundation to, to honor you, our educators. 
Uh, before we move on to dinner and uh, the rest of the program, if I could, I'd like to have you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And it is an honor for me to be asked to once again enjoy in the, uh, and join in the celebration, of course, uh, the education that Mr. Wilkes has helped to uh, uh, provide for, or I should say, the support for the education in the community, and also, of course, with the arts, something near and dear to my heart at Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park. So we, uh, we appreciate that, his gifts to the community. Has anybody, is there anybody that's never been here before? A few people, a few people. A lot of people come every year. Um, and of course, this is something we have celebrated for a number of years, but if I could ask to turn the lights back up, I'd like to introduce a gentleman who has never been here before, uh, but in very involved with uh, what we have going on to celebrate this evening. Welcome to, uh, and thank you for being here, our new superintendent, Mr. Tony Orr. And I promised him all he had to do was wave. He didn't have to make a speech tonight, so he was thankful for that. Uh, to get on with the program, we'd like, I'd like to make an introduction here for the uh, chair of the judging committee for the uh, Education Awards. This is Dr. Beverly Taylor, who is a professor of physics at Miami University in Hamilton and received her PhD from Clemson University specializing in quantum physics. Is anybody else intimidated besides me? Her scholarly work includes development of curriculum materials for middle school science and also investigation of issues related to the success of females in science at both middle school and college levels. As part of the Miami Teaching Success with Toys program, she has led in-service workshops that reach thousands of teachers nationwide. She was selected as a fellow of the American Association of Physics Teachers in recognition of her contributions to the field of physics education. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Beverly Taylor. Welcome, and boy, those lights are bright. It's a good thing I don't really need my notes. Um, before I introduce this year's grant recipients, as always, we want to take a few minutes and look at the results of our 2014 grants. Uh, those of you that have been here year after year, we may notice a few differences uh, in this year's video, and that you may remember that last year, in honor of Mr. Wilkes, uh, we funded a much larger than normal number of grants. And we really didn't think you wanted to sit here long enough for us to do what we normally did for all 16 of those grants. And so what we've done this year is do a video uh, that features a few grants and that are mostly sort of highlights uh, and some, a little bit about some of the other grants. Uh, so I think you'll enjoy it without uh, having to be here a lot longer than normal uh, and when we usually get out at the end of the evening. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at the video next. We started the Open the Door, Let's Explore with the members of the Green Team coming together and wanting to extend what we do with the green team. We wanted to take those activities and include it into the students during the school day. The goal is to get the kids outside and to uh, enable teachers to feel comfortable with a science curriculum and hands-on experience. The kits have been created uh, with literature along with other content area. Literally the teachers are able to just pick up a box and walk out the door into our trails and to uh, other areas on our school site that enable us to teach science effectively. Inside the kits is everything the teacher will need. 
for, um, for a lesson outside. There are pre-made lesson plans, there's art, movement, as well as literature at the beginning and end of the lesson, which are both fiction and nonfiction. And some of the kits involve life cycle molds and hands-on activities for them to get outside. And some of the kits are just, let's go observe and see what you see. The kids cannot wait to go outside. When you let them know that during your day, that sometime you're gonna go outside to the to the classroom. They are so excited. Being outside enhances the learning atmosphere. All grade levels are able to participate, uh, preschool through sixth grade. We've seen an increase in the teachers uh, involved in outside activities. We are blessed with the perfect site. We have trails, we have a wetland area, we have uh, essentially a prairie area. Uh, we just have the perfect site for this. We have really cultivated habitat, areas for animals to be natural so students can observe those while still incorporating language arts, math, science, and history. Sometimes it's like this, just this discovery of a butterfly landing on a flower. And it's like something they've never seen before, even though they probably see it every day. We've had our Brookwood School Garden growing for about five years now and the Seed to Plate grant has enabled us to grow our garden even bigger. We've been able to add five raised beds bringing us to 15. We got an indoor growing tower so we are able to grow food in different ways using water and we were also able to add a greenhouse to our shed. So we've taken our garden and we've been able to grow it to the next level because of seed to plate. This year in the early spring we planted the garden with all kinds of salad seeds including lettuce, kale, spinach, carrots, radishes and more and we did what was called secret salad seeds. So students in every grade kind of teamed up with a garden buddy in a younger grade and they spent eight weeks observing what was growing in their square foot in the garden. So they would measure, they would observe, they would compare and contrast and over the eight weeks they determined the vegetable that they were growing which is really exciting for them. And then at the end of the school year, we harvested everything and had a salad party. And we made almost 600 salads and it was very exciting to watch the kids eating what they had grown in the garden. We had 82 students and because of the grant, we ended up being able to implement this program to 178 students. During the eight weeks that students were out there in the garden with their secret salad seeds, they kept a journal where they would um, write down their measurements, write down their observations, write down things that they were wondering about. So we were really able to tie the garden into math, science, language arts, and just open up a dialogue between the students and their older buddies, the students and their teachers, and kind of a school-wide dialogue about gardening in general since the whole school's involved in it. I'm really appreciative to the Hamilton Community Foundation for giving us opportunities to write grants. My Lego and Write grant was inspired through the district and as well as our buildings initiative for writing. A lot of times with our students, it's hard to get them to want to write. It involves a lot of skills. And with the Common Core State Standards, that's an important part of it. Plus, writing is important because it allows you to internalize everything that you're learning. The reason for the Legos is for those students who aren't inspired to write. We give them a jumping board on which to begin their writing. And oftentimes writing begins with listening and then speaking and talking. And we've added something else with the manipulation of the Legos to start their stories. The students truly become excited when they come to camp. They're ready to play Legos. Of course, playing leads to your imagination, and that's what you need when you start with a subject upon which you're going to write. I like the conversations between the students as well, because they inspire each other on topics. They can talk about their setting, what they're creating, they talk about this character's doing that. And so then we say your inspiration then goes from your brain down your arm and into your pencil. So thank you so very much, Hamilton Community Foundation. Here at Ridgeway Elementary, we started a program called Ridgeway Steals the Beat. And last year, we purchased six Jumbi Jam steel drums, and they are the table set 
Jumbi Jams, and they fit very nicely in with the xylophones and the metallophones. Part of the goal for me starting last year was to make sure that every single student at Ridgeway had exposure to the steel drum and was playing it on a weekly basis. I incorporated the steel drums in with a program called Mallet Madness and it basically mixes them all up and you rotate the kids around before they're done with their 30 minutes of music. They've all had an opportunity to get on a steel drum. So at least once a week they are playing mallet instruments and percussion instruments and our steel drum instruments which are amazing. This year they're going to be featured in the veterans program. They're also going to be in the holiday program. So you can really play just about any type of song. Steel drums are a different keyed instrument. So what I have on them are little magnets to make sure that the students don't play the wrong keys. So they're all set in like a pentatonic scale. And for the little ones they can play almost any note and it will all sound good together as long as those keys are restricted from them. It was hard, you know, in a class of 30 to think about just six steel drums and finding that way to keep them all engaged, all involved, and the Mallet Madness, the rotation, allows us to do that. They know it pretty well, and this is just first grade, so they, they had a very small amount of this last year in kindergarten. So our, our, our sixth graders are able to do quite a bit more. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, oh, one. Shoulder holders, nice job. A few years ago, we used to have the Cincinnati Shakespeare Company come and do productions for our students, and then the funds just weren't there. So. We went for a long time without our students having exposure to live theater. My dream was to bring Cincinnati Shakespeare Company back to Hamilton High School so that our students could experience the thrill and fun of live theater. We read Shakespeare practically every grade in the Hamilton City Schools from freshman year up, yet students don't get to see the plays the way they were supposed to be done. And we thought it was really important for students to have that time and that experience because so many of them, this it's brand new to them. They, they may have gone to a concert, they may have gone to um, a sporting event, but to see live professional theater is something that is just amazing for them. And it's so eye-opening. A lot of them don't know what to expect when they go in. So last year when we were able to do this through a Wilkes grant, it was an amazing experience for the kids. They had so much to say, there was such excitement. So it's really getting kids to experience the, the joy of Shakespeare, to have it come alive. Students loved it because they were saying, I, I actually got more of it. When I could see the actors doing what we read about, it was like, it was real. It was so fun. So we're really thrilled that we were able to have the grant and it was a way of getting 600 kids into live theater and to have that wonderful experience here in Hamilton, Ohio. The Model Rocket Club is a way to get kids interested in the STEM curriculum, it's, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. There's a worldwide demand for that right now in the job force. So I thought, what's a way that I can teach math and science and prepare kids for later on in life? Maybe get some of them motivated, maybe get some of them thinking, hey, science is something I really like and something I can do for a job someday and I can earn money doing it and have fun. They can have fun while they're learning as well. And I think it's just a great way for them to interact with each other. It teaches teamwork and problem solving skills and creativity. I can pull out the best from each kid because every kid is, is the best at something. And that's what I always tell them. I have kids who are, who say, I can't do that. And I'm like, no, but you're better than everybody else at something. Because it's true, I can pick out all my kids and find one thing for each of them that they're better than everybody else at. To start out, they'll each have a, their own kit. So it's just following instructions, it's very basic. And we're going to use those to teach the, kind of the basics of um, some physics concepts like Newton's laws of, uh, you know, and, and then some basic math concepts. As they learn those different concepts, they're going to design their own. And we're going to use computer software to do that. There's a, a program called RockSim and allows them to test their design. It's like a flight simulator. 
They can create it, we'll put the design in there, they'll test it. If it doesn't blow up in the simulator, then they'll actually go and they'll build that physical, mo that physical rocket and we'll launch those at the end of the year. I don't know. For, it, honestly, a lot of it depends on, that does have a little bit to do with it, but a lot of it has to depend on the rest of the rocket too. America's Battle of the Books is a national program that is run all throughout the United States. And when I found that out, I decided that it would be a good thing to bring to the Hamilton City Schools here at Ridgeway. It's a set of 46 books that the students could choose from to read. And at the end of the year, we hosted teams with a big battle and one team of four girls ended up being the champions. At the end of the year, we held our competition and we would generally do two groups at a time. Whoever won that battle went on to the next battle. So we ended up having like, you know, the finals and the semifinals and the quarterfinals. It was really exciting. I got to read a lot more books than I normally would have, so it was kind of fun. Some of the groups had students that were very avid readers and read almost every book on the list and then there were some students maybe in their team that didn't read as much and so I think those students were kind of pushed by their team members to read more than typically they would because they all wanted to do well in the actual competition. My favorite part was just reading the books in general because all the books were really good. But here at Ridgeway, they did wonderful. We had a couple of kids that read all but like five of the books. The great thing about it is there's a lot of classics involved, like Old Yeller, Mr. Lemoncello's Library, lots of wonderful books from our past that we can now pass on to kids. All the other kids, they would really enjoy reading all of these books that they might have not e even ever heard of. Um, so they're just gonna really enjoy these new fun books. We are the Book Thieves. We are the bookmarkers, and we love Battle of the Books. Thank you, Hamilton Community Foundation. These are just a few of the Harry T. Wilkes grant projects that took place last school year. Other Harry T. Wilkes grants awarded for the 2014-2015 school year are Preparing for Post-Secondary in the Lab, Mrs. Cheryl Burke, Hamilton High. Brain Games, On the Cutting Edge of Psychology, Mr. Justin Frost, Hamilton High. Building a Beat, Mrs. Alexandra Frost, Hamilton Freshman School. Empty Bowls, Mrs. Terry Haynes Tony, Ridgeway Elementary. Riverview Drama Club, Miss Angela Holland, Riverview Elementary. Ridgeway Sixth Grade Takes Broadway, Mrs. Nikki Jalil, Ridgeway Elementary. Transitioning to Adulthood with Diabetes, Miss Tracy Heineke and Mrs. Molly Markley. Hamilton High and Hamilton Freshman School. Easy Care Convertible Garden Benches, Mrs. Kimberly Waggle, Ridgeway Elementary. ABCs of Success, Mrs. Erin Watkins, Hamilton High. Congratulations to all of last year's recipients for the equal and profound effect those projects had on our students. Now we want to recognize the 2015 grant awardees and if you'll please uh, stand uh, when I call your name and I know it's really difficult for the audience but if we could hold our applause till I'm done uh, that would be really good. Sarah Daniels, Stephen T. Baden High School, Everyday Art, Tilt Top Tables for the Art Classroom. Kim Westrick, Brookwood Elementary School, Sphero Education. Christy Bunger, Brookwood Elementary School, Brookwood Lego League. Robin Scalzari, Fairwood Elementary School, High Interest Literacy Solutions. Bridget Lackey, Hamilton High School, Adaptive Skills Learning Cohort. Jennifer Courtney, Hamilton High School. H2O Quality Study, Environmental Sciences students. Christina, Christina Denon Mapes, Abigail Gruner, and Kimberly Pruitt, Ridgeway Elementary School, cooking through the curriculum. Thanks, congratulate our winners.
Now, if you want to know more about those grants, uh, there's some additional description uh, in your program. And I'm sure any of these teachers will be happy to bend your ear after the program about all the wonderful things they're doing. Now, before I turn the program back over to Sean and we begin to recognize our nominees uh, for the Educator of the Year Award, uh, I'd like to take just a moment and recognize the judging committee members. Uh, and if those of you that are here uh, would please stand. Katie Braswell, Hamilton Community Foundation. Nancy Lanny, Community Volunteer. Matt Munafo, Pitt, Ohio. Lee Sanders, Miami University. Sarah Wuchik, Pitsu, my also from Miami University. Okay, let's thank our judging community. <laughs> These folks read all of the grant applications and all of the Educator of the Year nominee nominations and work very diligently to make some very hard decisions. Uh, let me remind you, particularly for these Educator of the Year awards, uh, that we do all of this anonymously, uh, trying very hard to be fair, uh, so that when the nomination packets come into the foundation, one of the foundation employees removes all identifying information uh, that would tell us what school it was from or who the teacher was, uh, before it ever gets to us and assigns random numbers. And we don't know uh, anything about who's receiving, who's the finalist, who's receiving the award, uh, except I know that it was number four. Uh, and I'll be just as surprised as you are in a few minutes uh, when the winner is announced. If you could please thank you to Dr. Taylor, who heads up the <laughs> judging committee. Uh, they spend a lot of time with this, all the representatives, and I also want to point out, as Dr. Taylor has, that uh, is quite a cross-section of, of people involved with the judging committee. So it's something that uh, the Community Foundation takes a lot of pride in, and I think the schools take a lot of pride in as well. Uh, the bar has been set pretty high with uh, what you've seen so far with, with, with the grants, for instance, so we wish the best to our, our 2015 grant award recipients. Now, if we could, I'd like all our educator nominees to please come forward, and I'm going to have you stand right by the stage here and give you a minute or so to, to come forward, please. So what we're going to do is we're going to have each of the nominees, as I, as I say your name, you come forward come to me up on the stage so that everybody can see who you are then also come over and say hi to Beverly and uh, we have some we have some prizes for you it's a swag bag but there's not a lot of swag in there it's the bag <laughs> itself the bag itself is what it's important for you okay all right uh, please welcome again these are our nominees this year please welcome to the stage Ryan Britton from Ridgeway Elementary <laughs> April Brooks from Linden Elementary. Good to see you. Jennifer Courtney from Hamilton High School. Thank you. Amanda Green from Bridgeport Elementary. Brenda LaBeouf Pearson from Highland Elementary. <laughs> Susan McIntosh from Garfield Middle School. Barbara Reimer, Crawford Woods Elementary. Karen Smith, Brookwood Elementary. <laughs> Rebecca Ware from Riverview Elementary. So 
and Desiree Winterbottom from Fairwood Elementary. All right, who did I miss here? I have a list. Matt you... Hoover, Wilson Middle School. Yeah. Oh yeah, right there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. You did it better than I did. Say it again. Matt Hoover, Wilson Middle School. There you go. That was a thorn between roses, is that right? There we go. Congratulations and thank you for your gifts and service to our school. Yeah, he's right there in the middle. Right there in the middle. Thank you, Matt. All right. No, please. That's right. Now we're going to introduce the finalists and show a video for each one, but I would like to also say that as, uh, as they are announced, that each of these five finalists will be receiving an engraved glass apple and a $500 grant to be used in their school or the district uh, to promote educational excellence. So again, uh, rewards for the gifts you give, and we appreciate that as we give you, give you these gifts. So I would like to introduce, first I'll introduce the video, and uh, then as the, the finalists can come forward, with uh, after the video is complete. Our first finalist is Mr. Ryan Britton from Wichwood Elementary School. Training minds to explore, investigate, question, and discover is what kindergarten teacher Ryan Britton does best. He's just an amazing person whose heart is in teaching and making a positive and a huge difference in every single little life. Ridgeway is recognized as a wild school site by the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and Ryan helped blaze that trail by helping to create two outdoor classrooms, an amphitheater and curriculum for outdoor teaching, all paid by a grant proposal he successfully wrote. A longtime mentor to the school's green team, he paired kindergartners with fifth graders to plant native vegetation as a way to increase the wildlife habitat around the school. His classroom has been turned into a small zoo, complete with a tortoise, colorful fish, and even hissing cockroaches. Using costumes and puppets to convey a point to his class is a common part of his effective teaching style. Obviously, I love kindergarten. They're just, they're so engaged and they love coming in every day and it's just exciting to see them so excited and, and it, happy to be here and to learn. Referred to as a cheerleader for the rest of the school, Colleagues agree that Ryan's enthusiasm and passion is contagious. For these reasons and more, Ridgeway Elementary proudly nominates Ryan Britton for Educator of the Year. We'd like to uh, introduce our next video for Ms. Susan McIntosh. Susan McIntosh has been a team leader at Garfield Middle School for many years, helping students toward academic success with individual intervention programs tailored to their specific needs. Her students participate in the Letters About Literature event, a national competition sponsored by the Library of Congress. An amazingly high percentage of the entries that advanced to the second statewide round and beyond were from her classroom. Thought of by her peers as a mentor and a teacher of teachers, Susan is often asked to lead professional development and make presentations to the staff. Her continual reading leads her to helping to keep colleagues abreast of developments in the field of education. Novice teachers are often placed under her advisement, resulting in noticeable personal and professional growth. We are trying really hard as an 8th grade language arts department to work together. We have a couple of new teachers in the 8th grade and so I've worked with them trying to get everybody to kind of align their curriculum and not have anybody feel like they're kind of out there on their own. Her nominator may have summarized it best, her charity of time, her strength of instruction, and her passion for character compose a classroom symphony that blends pedagogy with grace. Ms. McIntosh is really that teacher that exemplifies really what a teacher means. I couldn't think of any other teacher that I would rather my own child be in her classroom. Garfield Middle School proudly nominates Susan McIntosh as a Harry T. Wilkes nominee for Teacher of the Year. We'd like to introduce our, our next video 
from Crawford Woods Elementary School, Ms. Barbara Reimer. Barbara Reimer has served students in the Hamilton City School District for more than 35 years. She has indeed touched thousands of lives, not just as a teacher, but as a mother, mentor, friend, and confidant. As a young student said to her, you are the best reading teacher and you make me laugh a lot. Also, you make things easy. Indeed, the principal at Crawford Woods Elementary observed that test scores go up whatever area Barbara is instructing, consistently reaching targets. I've actually worked with Mrs. Reamer for a, a long time, both as a teacher and also as the principal of the building. So throughout my tenure with her, she, as a teacher, she was always there to support the students. As a principal, the thing that I admire the most about Barb is that she is constantly looking for new ways to learn, constantly staying current with her practice. A leader among the staff, peers have often expressed that Barbara's contribution to their own professional development is a true asset to the school and the entire district. Well, the best part for me is in the classroom, because I've been around so long, I do get that question, when are you going to retire? My answer is, if that's all you're thinking about, you're in the wrong profession. I always say, I'm going to quit when it's not fun anymore. If you really enjoy watching a kid do that aha moment, then you need to get in. For this and all her activities in and out of the classroom for 35 years, Barbara is a Natural Educator of the Year nominee. Uh, I'd like to introduce our, our next video from Brookwood Elementary, Mrs. Karen Smith. Acknowledging that the start of first grade can be a big transition, Karen Smith takes extra measures to ensure each child feels special. One of the things I absolutely love about Karen is she's an outstanding educator because she is so compassionate to her students. You can spend 10 minutes in her classroom and you can feel the warmth. Karen is the best. We for sure think she tops the rest. A heart of gold to the young and old. She brought us Brock and the students thought he rocked. He teaches the kids to read and write. She opens their eyes to a whole new light. She is the glue that keeps our team together. We know the students will remember her forever. She is the author of a realistic fiction book called Even Though I'm Small. I wrote the story Even Though I'm Small uh, about my daughter Allison who was born with dwarfism. And a doctor back when she was very little gave us the advice to tell the students about it when she gets to school. Just tell everybody and inform them and educate it and kids are very loving and accepting and once they know what it is and why she's shorter, then they'll accept it and go on. So I took it a step further and then just made it more into a fiction story that more children could relate to. It kind of empowers the kids that, well, even though I'm small, I can still do it. I might do it a different way, but I can still do anything that you're doing. This is just one of this teacher's valuable lessons and just one of the reasons that Karen Smith is Brookwood Elementary School's 2015 nominee for Teacher of the Year. I'd like to introduce our next video from Riverview Elementary, Miss Rebecca Ware. Rebecca Ware constantly reinvents her teaching approach to meet the needs of students and the ever-changing curricula. Her positive attitude creates a safe learning environment for students. They feel comfortable making mistakes, asking questions, and learning as a community. She is the total package because there's a lot of times that she will take care of things that kid, the needs that kids have without even being told. She is an, uh, definitely an advocate for kids gets them what they need. Academically, materialistically, if they need something, she's one that would definitely get them what they needed in order for them to be successful. Rebecca applies every early intervention strategy she can find to help reach all students, and she is willing to reteach and intervene with varied approaches. If they don't get it one way, second way, I gotta keep trying until they get it. So they're coming ready to learn. My job is to make sure I'm finding ways that they will learn it. Besides being an accomplished math teacher, Rebecca is the school's technology consultant. She leads workshops for coworkers as they transition to new devices and software. She's constantly planning and looking up lessons and, and putting activities together and helping other people with PowerPoint or smart board lessons. You know, that's Becca and it's going, it's 24 seven. And she volunteers at the Boys and Girls Club and she's involved in our kids from sunup to sundown. 
These are just some of the many reasons Riverview Elementary School proudly nominates Rebecca Ware for the Educator of the Year. While they're returning to their seats, uh, please, let's give a warm round of applause for these fine educators. <laughs> we see examples, again, of what's going on in our school district and, and uh, who is teaching, nurturing our children, our next generation. We appreciate that. Uh, would like to, if I could, also turn up the lights for a second to, if they are here, point out to you the uh, committee, the Hamilton Celebrates Education Committee, that worked diligently to put this together. Uh, if they are here, please stand. We have Dirk Allen from Baden High School, Katie Broswell from the Hamilton Community Foundation, Steve Caldwell from TV Hamilton, he better be here, <laughs> uh, Joni Copas from the Hamilton City Schools, Leah Fields from the Hamilton City Schools, Angie Gray from Baden High School, uh, Betsy Hope from the Hamilton Community Foundation who works very hard to put this together, and of course Dr. Beverly Taylor from Miami University, if you could please stand. Thank you. And by the way, uh, Dirk and Angie, that's a great Zip Zap video on YouTube. Saw that on Facebook, actually on Facebook. If you haven't seen it, your, they put their faces on these characters that are dancing around. So those are your educators, too. <laughs> we will be announcing here the winner of the 2005 Harry T. Wilkes Hamilton Celebrates Education. But I do want to point out that uh, thanks to Mr. Wilkes, thanks to the Hamilton Community Foundation, that this uh, award continues year after year. And uh, through this, we have various grants we've awarded so far this year. Our nominees have received uh, cash that they can use in the schools and the school district. And our finalists will receive a $5,000 grant award, uh, again, to use in the school or the district. <clears throat> and I do want to point out, although I'm going to be very careful not to show who it is. OK, I don't. This very special envelope actually was created for this special event. Um, I have information here that I wanted to pass on because we, this is, this is a very special envelope. In case you didn't know, this was made by Gingham Girl, uh, Heather Monson, who has uh, some things in here that are customized for this person. And uh, again, we appreciate the, the card the winner will receive and uh, the classroom decorated with uh, some of these things that are in this card. So again, we appreciate that something special was created. Also, we have the crystal bowl. This is all in buildup and uh, <laughs> anticipation. So again, we'd like to recognize all the grant winners, uh, the nominees, as well as the finalists, and announce this year the winner of the 2015 Harry T. Wilkes Hamilton Celebrates Education Award is Mr. Ryan Britton. <laughs> From Ridgeway Elementary, I want to show the envelope. Go ahead and open it. I'll try to open it. You should open it. Do that. Something oh, very little frogs. It was it was created especially for you. I'm in the frog classroom in kindergarten. So he's got, he's got frogs. Oh. And also, whoops. And also, uh, this glass bowl with your name on it, etched on it. Congratulations and thank you for what you do and please share with us. Thank you. Uh, well, this is beyond humbling, so say, thank you so much. Uh, words cannot express my overwhelming gratitude uh, for this award and most importantly to the love and support from my family and friends um, who I wouldn't be here without today and my colleagues as well. 
Looking around the room at all these dedica dedicated educators, I feel blessed just to be among teachers who care so deeply for all their students, and that is what truly inspires me. I thank you um, as well to the Hamilton Community Foundation and the Wilkes Grant Committee, your continued investment in our community, our educators, and our students is just exemplary. We are so fortunate in Hamilton to be encouraged in our classroom, our schools, and in our community where you recognize quality education. You have provided experiences for our students that just wouldn't be possible without your support. So thank you for everything that you do. As I was reflecting on my teaching career these past few weeks, I could not stop smiling because we have the best job in the entire world. Every day we get to go to work in our dynamic students and we give them the tools just to discover the world around them. What is better than that? Honestly, what is better than that? I love that. <laughs> Our students are brilliant, they're creative, they're inspiring, they're smart, and they're the reason we're so passionate about our call to teach. So a quote I constantly look to for inspiration was said by Harry Edwards. We must teach our children to dream with our eyes wide open. Instead of putting our students in these perceived boxes that we think what they can and what they can't do, we have to strive to let them reach for the stars. I recently asked my students, what do you dream to be when you grow up? Zoe said, I want to be a scientist and help animals. Brandon said, I want to be a firefighter. Molly piped up and said, I want to be an artist. And then this one friend with all the enthusiasm of a confident five-year-old said, I'm going to be a pirate, and I'm going to get an eye patch, and I'm going to have a peg leg, but I have to wait till I can afford a pirate ship. <laughs> Good for you, buddy. You know, we all have hopes and dreams. And no matter how silly or unrealistic they may seem to other people. I've been so touched and blessed for the people in my life who have not only believed in me, but who have taught me to dream with my wide, eyes wide open. My parents who are here tonight, um, sorry, I lost my, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> my parents who are here tonight have always supported my dreams and I can only repay them by giving my students the knowledge and support they gave to me each and every day. And to my wonderful mentors and friends, Kathy Wagonfield and Paige Patton Radel, for giving me the courage and wisdom to think outside the box and reach for my dreams, I'm forever grateful for your constant support. My passion for kindergarten goes back to Connie Mittermeier. I student taught with Connie years ago, and she's now become one of my closest friends and allies. You live in my classroom every day. And Brad, thank you for always being there to listen and help me become the best person I can be. You're incredible. I am so fortunate to go to work every morning where I'm greeted by 26 five-year-olds who want nothing more than to learn and discover. Whether it's going outside and reading in our outdoor classroom, observing our class pets, or being kindergarten authors, I see the joy of learning in everyone's face. One of my favorite books I get to share every year is Shel Silverstein's The Giving Tree. I'm sure you know that. I share this book every year on Grandparents' Day, and I admire how the story relates to people of all ages. The themes of compassion, courage, selflessness throughout are the keystones to who we are as a community here in Hamilton. We have this incredible opportunity to instill these values in our students and build that community in each of our rooms. I see this in classrooms at school every day and know that our family at Ridgeway, as well as the greater family in Hamilton, all give students the strength and support to do good in the world. Thank you once again for this prestigious award that I share with all my colleagues. You are the reason our students are so passionate about making the world a better place. So my fellow educators, let's continue to live out our dreams with our eyes wide open. Thank you so much. One final word, uh, again, congratulations to Ryan, congratulations to our um, other nominees, to our finalists, to our grant award, and thank you to all the educators in this room, everybody involved with education, for again, teaching, nurturing, caring for, and um, building our next generation, our children. Thank you, have a good evening.